Friday marks the weekly wrap of Primetime News. A warm welcome to tonight's edition. I'm Michael Madimba. As we always call upon you, if it's your first time joining us, please subscribe, press the like button, and be sure to click on the bell icon to stay abreast with the latest in local and global news. Leading the bulletin tonight. Swapo lawmaker Toby Aupindi says Namibia stands to benefit greatly from the cooperation treaty on issues of mutual interest and the justice and legal fraternities with the Russian Federation, saying the latter has resources and expertise Namibia can only aspire to attain. Edward Mumbo Jr. compiled our first report. There is no question whatsoever, and it's a fact, that the Russian Federation is a very technologically and sophisticated country with a lot to give. It is the fifth largest economy in Europe, but number one by far in key strategic industries such as technology and in natural resources, in particular oil and gas. Now, Namibia's future could very well lie uh, in this type of treaties, bilaterally and multilaterally uh, forged. I see this as a big win for Namibia because the, the treaty aims, and I quote, to strengthen the legal foundation of, of providing not mutually legal assistance in criminal matters with a desire to improve the effectiveness of activity of combating crimes, including uh, ter terrorism, unquote, with the respect for both international law and uh, sovereign equality. And I thought that was very important, Honorable Minister, to, to have the mighty Russian Federation, one of the first uh, and, and superpower of the world, where we are engaging on equal footing. Because many a times when we enter into this type of treaties, uh, the bigger partner usually uh, comes out with um, a lot uh, to bargain for in terms of power. On to the Irongo region. Expectant mothers in Walvish Bay Squisabund residential area will no longer need to travel to the Walvish Bay State Hospital about four kilometers away to access the necessary antenatal care. Let's find out why from the story compiled by Isabel Bento. This after a diagnostic ultrasound imaging machine was donated to the Kusukmund Health Center by the Japanese Embassy. It's one of 17 such machines provided to various health facilities in the Rongo region. Previously, expected mothers were transferred to the state hospital in order to access the services of the ultrasound machine, which was an inconvenience to some of them. Acting Senior Medical Officer of the Valvers Bay, State Hospital Dr. Augusto Gawap, during a visit to the health center on Thursday, reiterated that the facility needs to be improved with the right standard infrastructure as well as staff. Deputy Minister of Health and Social Services Esther Munyangwe during the visit emphasized the importance of maternal, prenatal and newborn health to a person, society and the country at large. Chinese Ambassador to Namibia Hideaki Harada noted that the donation was done in order to enable healthcare workers to provide quality essential services and equip primary healthcare facilities and improve maternal and newborn care. Now, shifting attention to the Karas region, where the Namibian police force on Thursday arrested Walter Mostert at the Nut Urver border post after escaping from lawful custody on November the 5th, 2021. Edward Mumbo Jr. once more compiled this insert. Nambal spokesperson Deputy Commissioner Gauna Shikwambi made the announcement late Thursday evening. Shikwambi said, without providing further details, the former magistrate, a wounded person in the name of Mostert Walter, who escaped from hospital some months ago while under police guard, was arrested yesterday at Nuad Uva border post while trying to sneak into Namibia from South Africa. He stands accused of money laundering, extortion and fraud. Joy Gosses, Nampa News. On to continental news. In a worrisome development, United Nations humanitarians on Wednesday revealed that the Northeast Africa drought threatens to be one of the worst climate-induced emergencies in the area in the last 40 years. Xinhua furnishes us with the details. The United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs said people in Ethiopia, Kenya and Somalia have endured three consecutive poor rainy seasons. 
adding that the latest forecasts indicate that the March to May rains may be average to below average. If the rains are scarce, the drought risks becoming one of the worst climate-induced emergencies in the last 40 years in the Horn of Africa, with millions of people facing severe water shortages and going hungry due to the devastating drought in the region, the office said. The UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs said dry water sources across the region force people to walk long distances to find water, noting that conflict over scarce resources increases the risk of violence and abuse against children and women. The office said because of water scarcity, food insecurity is at a record high between 13.1 million and 14.1 million people in Ethiopia, Kenya and Somalia struggle to put food on the table every day. The office and its humanitarian partners seek 4.4 billion US dollars to provide self-saving assistance and protection to about 30 million people in the three countries this year, but funding is meager. Kindly stand by for your top roundup. Leading the primetime biz segment tonight. The Namibia Revenue Agency NAMRA on Thursday resolved to impose a three month moratorium on the tax refund claims for individual provisional taxpayers immediately after it unearthed a suspected syndicate at the agency. Mulisa Simeasa filed this report. NAMRA, in a media statement on Thursday, stated that the moratorium is imposed with immediate effect until the 30th of June 2022 in order for it to determine the extent of the scam and its real impact on the public purse. The statement said, The moratorium excludes tax refund claims of individual taxpayers and on value-added tax, since they were not affected, and thus the processing of these types of refunds will continue at the number of offices across the country. The Revenue Agency further explained that this scam is related to the tax refund claims which had been submitted by the individual provisional taxpayers. It noted that the trend which was used to commit this fraud was that the individual taxpayer's profile would be changed, mostly with the assistance of the taxpayer's representative or brokers. For their profiles to become a provisional taxpayer associated to the taxpayer's earning incomes from other sources, additionally from their employment, like the farming activities. The statement read indications are that several players might have been involved, although it is possibly premature, they cannot rule out the active participation of their members in the scam. NAMRA said an estimate of 15 million Namibian dollars appeared to have been claimed through it. Consequently, NAMRA has already opened criminal cases against some identified suspects in this fraud and is encouraging those who might have unwittingly benefited from the scam to also engage NAMRA in order to aid the ongoing investigations in exposing the true masterminds. If we all thought fuel was the only commodity on the increase, then well, guess what? Namib Mills on Thursday announced that the prices of bread, maize meal, rice, instant porridge products, sugar, as well as pasta, are set to increase as of 25 April 2022. Mulisa Simiasa compiled this report once more. Namib Mills in a media statement explained that the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine has exacerbated already increasing global food and energy costs. 
It said even before the war, food prices had been on the rise for the past year as a result of a variety of factors such as rising transportation costs, supply chain disruptions and rising commodity prices such as maize and wheat. Ukraine and Russia represent around 10% and 20% respectively of global wheat production and nearly 30% of all wheat exports come from these two countries. In addition, China is facing its worst wheat crop in decades after severe flooding and is planning to buy much more of the world's windling wheat supply. The statement read the price of global wheat has increased by 93% over the last 12 months and 43% in the last month. Adding, this has led to an increase in the landed cost of raw wheat and all wheat-based products. It further noted that a total of 25 African countries import wheat and its products from Russia and Ukraine. With the business and economics news, we've come to the end of the top news for this evening. Kindly stay tuned for the economics roundup and the weather forecast thereafter. A very good evening and a warm welcome to Sport Planet. I'm Salima Shimwefeleni Masipa. 
the FIFA 2022 World Cup playoffs dominate the segment. A spectacular first half performance from Brazil's forward trio of Neymar, Vinicius Jr. and Anthony paved the way for a stylish 4-0 win against Chile. Neymar scored his 71st international goal in his 117th cap for Brazil, while for Vinicius it was just a second goal in his 13th international appearance as the Selassau claimed a deserved 2-0 half-time lead, controlling 63% of the possession. To Chile's credit, with their World Cup qualification hopes just about alive, their second half ensured a competitive encounter with chances of their own, but Brazil were comfortable, having already booked their place in Qatar. A hopeful long ball forward ended up with a second penalty for the hosts, with Philippe Coutinho getting his name on the score sheet soon after his arrival into the match after Neymar delegated the duties. There was time for Richarlison to add a fourth two. Now on to some rather disappointing news for Italian soccer fans. Four-time World Cup winners Italy will miss a second consecutive FIFA World Cup after the Azzurri suffered a shocking 1-0 home loss to North Macedonia in the 2022 World Cup playoffs on Thursday. Italy took the initiative early in the game and created many opportunities, tallying 32 shots on goal, but North Macedonia managed to win despite only four attempts on goal. Italy will not play at a FIFA World Cup Finals for the second consecutive occasion after the Azzurri also failed to qualify for Russia 2018. Kindly stand by for the Sports Roundup. With the Sport Planet segment, we've come to the end of tonight's edition of Primetime News. Many thanks for joining us. Once more, another reminder that if you're new to this channel, please subscribe, like, share and click on the notifications bell to stay up to date with the latest happenings locally and globally. Do feel free as well to interact with us in the comments section. Catch us next week Monday as we bring you the latest in local and global news. From myself, Salima Shimwefeleni Masipa and the entire production crew, have a restful weekend and good night.